It's Thursday, December 26, 2019. This is the kit that I bought. I got it on sale for $99 less or 30% off. Took advantage of the free shipping to my house because it's not in my store. I'm just checking to see if it's a lower price after Christmas, which it doesn't seem to be. That battery is $99 by itself. Anyway, I'll keep checking because within the next 30 days, if they have a lower price on this kit, I get the difference refunded. As far as which kit did I decide to keep, the Milwaukee or the or this Milwaukee or the Makita subcompact, I haven't decided yet. So far it's looking like this kit will be the one to keep. I watched other people's videos and they all seem to agree that the Milwaukee is more powerful. Okay, so this was the kit that I got from Makita that is regularly $199. I got it for $159. Although this might be a better kit, actually. Oh, and this kit does include the bag. It doesn't say that it does, but you do get the bag. I don't really like that bag, though. The Milwaukee bag is so much better. Oh, that ain't bad. That means you're only paying $72, well, $73, roughly, for the little saw. Anyway, this would have to drop quite a bit for me to actually get any more discount, but I'll probably take this kit back. What is weird is the drill on the fuel actually weighs less like an ounce or two, this drill actually weighs a little less than the Makita drill. Which is kind of bizarre, but still. And the price is about the same. You get the extra battery, but that battery by itself is $99. And I much prefer this type of bag to the bag that comes with this one that weird box cube like bag thing it doesn't have handles it has a shoulder strap and I'm not really a shoulder strap kind of person no no everything just slides off so I, I, I don't do the shoulder strap thing on the drawback the Milwaukee bag doesn't have places to put a shoulder strap so if you like that you have to buy a new bag I guess I don't know one thing I really like about the Makita is you have a gauge on the battery that you can check and see how much power is left you don't on the Milwaukee on the Milwaukee the gauge is on the tool so in order to, to see how much battery life is left you have to put the battery in the tool and lightly press the trigger or press the trigger. I wish the gauge was on the battery itself so you don't have to do all that just to see because if you got 20 batteries laying around a lot of people are saying you know stick with the same so if I if I keep the Milwaukee people are saying that I need to stay with Milwaukee line of tools 
In this case, I would need to stay with the M12 line of tools. Well, what about the M18 line? So, in a way, I think it's kind of stupid to limit yourself by staying with one line of tools. Although the M12 is a very good tool line, and I see their point, because you would have 20 different chargers and bunches of different batteries and platforms and whatever. I get that, but I wish it was on the battery itself and not on the tool. And as far as I know, the lowest amp hour battery on the Makita 18 volt LXT, I think this two amp hour batteries and above have it. So I think all of their LXT line has the fuel gauge on the battery. With Ryobi, if you notice, this is a two amp hour lithium ion compact battery. No fuel gauge. This is their 3 amp hour, but it's also their HP, their high capacity HP battery. And I think, don't quote me on this because I'm not 100% sure, but I have yet to see a smaller than 3 amp hour HP battery. But it has the fuel gauge on the battery. And these are very good batteries, by the way. I bought a couple of 4 amp hour batteries. They're pretty big. They're huge compared to the little Makitas and really huge compared to the 12 volt red lithium Milwaukee batteries. But they, they're really nice. Again, the Makita 2 amp hour. I think this is their smallest battery. It's their smallest one I can find. But see, this battery is $59. These two are $79, so that's about the same price range. What's happening is, why would I not continue buying Ryobi? Ryobi or Ryobi, however you pronounce that. Because their stuff is getting just as expensive as Milwaukee or Makita or something. I mean, this battery is literally about the same price if you bought two, it wouldn't be that much more. So I was checking for different tools and different stuff. What about a rotary tool? And yes, I know there's cheaper rotary tools out there. Now this is 7.2 volts, so really It's really not comparable to the other ones, but you can get a 7.2 volt cordless tool. This bumps up in 5,000 RPM increments. So while it says variable speed, it's not infinitely variable for only 2739. Or you could get the humongous Ryobi. They call this a cordless rotary tool, but and yeah, it is kind of cordless. You have the variable speed thing here on it. One thing that I would really like about those, you got the pencil type hand grip part. This would be a lot easier to hold. It's only $69. So this is the one that I bought. I didn't pay the $99 for it. I think I paid like 79 or 70 something or around $80 or less. It's pretty thick. But it is easy to use, comfortable. It's 12 volt. It's pretty heavy and pretty beefy. And of course, you know, Dremel, or you may know that Dremel makes like two different sizes below this. So you don't have to get this particular one. The weird thing about it is a new battery is like $69. So from what I paid, although I got mine at Lowe's when it was on sale, the weird thing about it is in order to buy a second battery, 
I would almost be buying a whole new tool. And I bought this too long ago to take back. I think it was around April that I bought it. And this is December, so that brings up an interesting thing. But this goes from zero to 35, 35 thousand RPMs, which brings us to the most expensive one on the list, and I'm thinking about buying and testing, is the Milwaukee fuel version. Well, technically it's not a fuel, it's just a Milwaukee 12 volt cordless, but it uses the same batteries. You get one battery, a few little pieces, a charger, which I really don't need all of that stuff, but I would like to get the case. I don't guess that's important, but for $119, this one only goes up to 35,000 RPMs. So it's 5,000 to 35,000 RPMs. And I think it also uses the same general stuff. It may not use that um, cord attachment thing, whatever you call it, the extension attachment. Okay, so it's still the most expensive. Well, actually, oh, okay, so I was comparing kits. That's what the deal is. These are all kits. Okay, so the tool only is cheaper than some of the other kits. That's what it was. And then, of course, all of my M12 batteries would fit it. Big advantage over the Dremel. Although technically the batteries for this is just as expensive, if not more expensive, than buying an additional Dremel battery. And you may actually wear out the whole tool before you ever need a new battery. It depends on how much you use it. What's not in the picture here is the case. It has a real nice blow molded case and the charger. Whereas I guess with the tool only, you just get the tool in a box. Let me know if you want me to compare the Wynn, the Ryobi, and the Milwaukee. Leave that in the comments. So what about this type of rotary cutter tool thing? Honestly, I don't have a use for one of these because I don't really do drywall. And I mean, you can put these bits in your Dremel and do it the one or two times that you might actually need that to be done. But DeWalt comes in as the most expensive at $129. Milwaukee's a close second. This is not a fuel tool, so it's it has brushes, I guess. I guess the biggest advantage to one of these over a Dremel type is this little mounting thing. But the Dremel has this thing here that you can put over the front of it to keep it from going all the way in. So I don't see the purpose of, of one of these tools actually unless unless you're using this on a job for drywall or something I mean it'll cut more than drywall but they basically call it a drywall cutout tool here's Makita's version their version's a little cheaper it's getting close to half of the price of the DeWalt But not quite that cheap. You can even see, I think, this is where the brushes go. A big button for locking the chuck. That may be the button here. To replace the brushes, I think you'd have to take this apart. I doubt. That may be, but I doubt. I'd have to look at the tool to see. I doubt that's where the brushes go. They've got a similar thing here. 
a big button to lock it up there or is that the button to lock it up anyway so why do I not just continue getting Ryobi or Ryobi tools for everything well one I'm wanting something that is subcompact or really really small for for the drill especially the drill and for the impact driver that I don't really use much anyway but this is what's happening this ain't a very good example though okay so the Ryobi is kind of on sale special buy for forty dollars there specifically says it includes a plywood bit drywall bit and wrench I think that they should make these tools like the um, impact drivers where it's quarter inch hexagon shape that you just pop it in and pop it out without all this other stupid crap but they have a tiny little button here and I don't see and I know this ain't the access to the brushes so you'd probably have to take the tool apart to replace the brushes unless that's something right there I don't know but a lot of the Ryobi tools especially their their newer greenish looking and especially their brushless are getting the same up there in in price as Milwaukee or Makita or DeWalt like this for example $129 I do have this jigsaw I got it free with their buy two battery charger kit get a free tool so I got this for free also it seems like it's been almost a year ago though but it seems like this was a hundred and twenty nine dollars as well but I got this tool free with the battery kit so I have two of those two battery charger in a bag I haven't even opened any of this stuff yet and it was from last Christmas sale so I really don't need it oh and before I forget I don't remember if it was this video or the last video or a video before this but I did find my blue jigsaw so I still actually have my blue Ryobi jigsaw so anyway this is very expensive you can get Milwaukee for about that price I think and this is very expensive I don't have this one but they're starting to call it the one plus HP because you kind of really need the HP advantage battery I have some of those they are excellent batteries but I don't really have anything to use it for that I've opened I should say So the basic equivalent, I guess, would be the M18 cordless, but it's six and a half inch instead of seven and a quarter. It's the same price Milwaukee offers. Their fuel version is seven and a quarter, but it jumps way up in price. So that's not really a good comparison. You may actually be better off with the great OB hard to say this one's still brushless so here's what I'm kind of trying to point out or it was three OB wrong one okay so 119 it's a brushless seven and a quarter and 179 this is that a lot of difference really I mean if you already have the M18 line obviously you would get this saw instead of switching to Ryobi because you're not really saving that much it's what 60 bucks and unless you already have Ryobi batteries you'd have to spend that on batteries there's 
not much of an option for the M12 that I already have a bunch of batteries for. It is a great price, but it's only five and three eighths. So to a degree, this is just about useless, except for maybe cutting plywood or. Um, does anybody actually put masonite siding on houses anymore? Leave that in the comments if you know anybody or if you put masonite siding up. Because five and three eighths would not put a 45 degree angle even in a two by four, would it? Because I don't think six, what is that, six and what? Yeah, I don't think six and a half will. I think you actually have to have seven or above. Don't quote me on that, but I think you actually have to have the seven and a quarter inch to put a bevel, a 45 degree angle in a two by four. Which, for the most part, at least for a carpenter or something, it kind of makes any of these smaller sizes all but worthless. And in my humble opinion, the whole purpose of something like this to be smaller and lighter. So they're brushless. One-handed, I guess they're calling it. Reciprocating saw is $99, tool only. And their battery format, again, I've mentioned this before, is humongous. When these tools came out, that battery format wasn't that big a deal. Now, however, I haven't actually seen this in the store, but I imagine that overall the tool is relatively large. You can get the M12 for $89 tool only. And it's not really that big. I mean, it's not tiny, but it's not that bad. You can even get the fuel version, which is considerably beefier and bigger. It's a relatively decent size, too, but it's only $139. So, I mean, if you look at it in a percentage way, 99 139 that's 40 percent more to me the price difference from 99 to even getting the the fuel version i would buy this one because what little use i would have for one of these this would be way more than adequate so i don't see the reason to stick with one line of tools when you can get a better brand milwaukee has a five-year warranty on their tools three years on the battery although it has been my experience that the longer the warranty on something the more the company tries to get out of honor in their warranty so there is that i did however spring for this one this is their brushless string trimmer so i did pay a little more and get it you can't really see it on the picture this isn't the charger that came with it uh, the charger that came with it does actually have the USB out port on it where this one does not at least it don't look like it does in this picture but this was the one I wound up getting but Ryobi has got this wicked thing going on this is a really good deal I think you get a string trimmer 4 amp hour 40 volt lithium battery and one thing that's kind of cool about this particular charger do I have the other charger on here okay so this charger is different I don't know anything about it I wouldn't I wouldn't mind having this pole saw though but see on this charger the battery slides in this slot right here and you got the controls over here it's only a two amp hour battery but notice the difference in this charger this charger 
slides on top of the battery. You flip the battery upside down and slide this on top of it. Okay. If you look close right here, there's a USB port. Okay, this, when you take the uh, plug-in cord off of it, you can use it as a portable power bank. It only has one USB out, but you can charge your phone or whatever by plugging it into the to the charger, basically. So it makes it a portable power bank, which is pretty nice. That means you don't have to buy a separate portable power bank if you have this 40 volt line with that charger. And of course, another reason to have the 40 volt batteries or another use for the 40 volt batteries is that you can plug them into their power inverter. It says 300 watts. I don't know how good these are. I don't actually have one. But they do actually offer one for their 18 volt as well, so 150 watt. Again, maybe it'll run a laptop for a little while. I don't know. Something nice to have in a power outage or camping or something. I don't know. So there was reasons to go with the 40 volt line to begin with other reasons now they've got several 40 volt tools so why bother fooling with all one and like 18 volt is kind of limited on what you can do for outdoor power tools or outdoor gardening and landscaping and gardening tools you you need more power Makita solved that problem by having two 18 volt batteries go on some of their tools making a 36 volt tool which are very expensive by the way this thing would be like three hundred dollars so you can get this for only 129 and they make a relatively decent i've seen some reviews on it it's only 14 inch the milwaukee version of this is just a little more money it's not that much more expensive but but the Milwaukee version is 16 inch, 18 volt, their M18 line. Now, I don't know if Milwaukee may have figured out a way to make a 18 volt motor turn that fast because the reviews I've seen on it, the videos where people have used it, it does turn as fast as a regular, you know, gas 36 cc gas engine chainsaw. So, I don't know, maybe that would be the one to get. Actually, it says it has the same power and performance as a 40cc gas chainsaw. Uh, $100 more. But it's 16 inch. Here's the equivalent kit. $199. $449. So, over twice the price. You do, however, get the charger that charges both the 12 volt and the 18 volt. They call it rapid charger, but still. And you get a 12 amp hour battery. You get a humongous battery with this puppy. Whereas just a tool, you don't get a battery at all. With the kit, you get a giant 12 amp hour battery. And their equivalent pole saw is very expensive. Which one of these was the pole saw? So $129. This is only an 8 inch pole saw compared to their 10 inch pole saw. They give you, Milwaukee gives you a 9 amp hour battery. Ryobi a 2 amp hour battery. But I mean, if you've got any two of these, you would have at least two two amp hour batteries. But here you'd have a four amp hour battery and a two amp hour battery 
and four. See, it'd have two fours and a two or some combination thereof. So why would I choose Ryobi over Milwaukee? Could it be this price right here? See, the thing is, how much am I going to use this tool? I may use this once a year to trim one tree, maybe two trees in the yard. So $400 is too much for that. This tool is made for somebody that uses it on a regular basis. This one, however, is made for the homeowner that needs to trim his own tree once in a while. This is made for somebody that's going to use it a lot more often than what little bit I would use my chainsaw. So I don't actually see the reason to stick to one line of tools. I mean, explain in the comments where the advantage would be if I went with the M18 line, where the advantage would Like the argument that people make is, well, then you'd have the same batteries and chargers that goes with all of your tools. But for an extra $250 here, plus an extra it's almost $300, so $270 plus $249, well, technically $250, will be $520 savings just getting these two. $520 savings. That would buy a lot of batteries. Well, technically not these 40 volts because they're like $100 a piece or $99 a piece. But the point comes down to is I think it's fine to buy some of your tools to be Makita, some of your tools to be Ryobi, and some of your tools to be Milwaukee. I don't see an overwhelming reason. The only good argument that I see for that would be Makita's 18 volt LXT line. Their batteries aren't that expensive. You get two 5 amp hour batteries for 159 or two 3 amp hour batteries for 99. See, some of their stuff gets very expensive. And that kit, you're getting this for half price. They're subcompact brushless. So this is what they done, but look at the price again. You get two 5 amp hour batteries, a double charger, an angle grinder, a chainsaw. Actually, this is a very good, a very good buy actually. When you consider the angle grinder would be 100 and something. You get brushless chainsaw, brushless angle grinder. Now before you flip out, I'm not, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not stuck on brushless. Every tool don't have to be brushless. Brushless does perform a little better, a little better. And the battery lasts quite a bit longer, but it's not that big a deal. But this is actually a super thing. This might be better in the long run. This may be better than getting, even getting the Ryobi. 
But the way Makita has solved that issue is using two batteries. So look at their string trimmer. But their string trimmer is over twice the price. of the Ryobi. Unless you buy it here. Then you're getting the 36 volt chainsaw, the 36 volt blower, and the 36 volt string trimmer and a brushless angle grinder so you're getting one two three four tools for seven hundred forty nine dollars plus two it looks like two five amp hour batteries and a charger that's a very good deal Especially if you're already in the Makita world. I haven't seen a pole saw yet. Do they have a pole saw? But Makita can be expensive. So here, you lose out on the string trimmer, but get a couple of extra batteries for a little less. Personally, I think the other might be the better buy. Had to do some math on it. So I'm not seeing a pole saw at all. Oh, and the... Well, that's the wrong one. The advantage to using the USB port here on this as a power bank, you can get an adapter from Makita. to do that. So this is the one for Makita's 18 volt LXT lithium batteries. You get two USB ports to, to charge your phone or laptop or whatever. And it says 2.1 amp output from each USB port. I don't know if that's simultaneously or what but but it's only twenty dollars so you don't have to go with the Rio B 40 volt to get a power bank if a lot of companies make these Milwaukee has them as well It may be an 18 volt pole saw. Or it's an attachment. It 
It looks like it comes as an attachment to their weed whacker. And you can get an extension shaft, which is relatively expensive. So if you need to get higher up, although this comes with the extension shaft, doesn't it? Isn't that the extension? Okay, so this would be the one to get. Maybe. It's even cheaper than that, but it doesn't come with the batteries and charger. But you get the 36 volt tool, the weed eater, weed whacker attachment, you get the extension, and it doesn't say how. But yeah, it looks like a 10 inch at least blade. Everybody says one system. We got our one system. But Makita still makes the 12 volt. I think it's CXT is what that's called. Oh, Makita's uh, fast charger and stuff is unprecedented. It actually draws uh, air in through the battery while it's cooling and charging. Or it's cooling it while it's charging and keeps your battery cool while charging. Makita's a wonderful system. The problem, however, with the uh, interchangeable things is that's one place for you to actually break something while you're taking attachments off and putting them on. Are they actually not going to say how long the blade is? They're not. Really? Uh, there's no questions and answers either, so nobody else asked and got that answered. I'm going to say, just to be saying, it's probably at least an 8 or a 10. Wow. Anyway, that's certainly a, a kit to consider. If you already have the 18 volt batteries, that's really a kit to consider. Still more expensive. I don't really need a blower though. So this will be a relatively good kit. A little more expensive than the Ryobi. And these two together. 
So 567. Pole saw and weed whacker. 567 minus 159. Minus 129. You'd still be paying $279 more to get the Makita. Then adding that expensive chainsaw. Or this kit. If instead of the blower this had a pole saw, that would be better. Although I don't really need an angle grinder either. It wouldn't be nice. It would be nice to have one. I just wanted to point out that Rayobi and even Bauer tools aren't that much cheaper than some of the name brands now. All those tools are getting, the cheap lines of tools are getting really expensive if you try to compare apples to apples as best we can. They're not necessarily that much cheaper. So let me know what you think in the comments. Which tool brand do you prefer? And why? And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment. Leave me a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave me a thumbs down if you like the video. Actually, that might be leave me a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. If you didn't like the video, leave me a thumbs up as well. Or both. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.